There it is. Is it backwards? Come on. It says 8.43. So I never told you guys, um, not only am I an overeater, but um, I got written up when I worked at Geico for getting a honey bun out of the vending machine. That dog gets on my nerves. <laughs> Really, every time I walk by, it disturbs my peace. Anyway, I was trying to diet because I wanted to lose weight. And instead of, um, oh, I have a reserved parking neighbor now. That spot's been empty for months. Instead of um, keeping to what I said I was going to do and diet, I got so hungry while I was at work, so... I went to the vending machine and I got a honey bun. When I came back from my desk, I feel like there was like a note or something. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I got an official write-up saying that they observed me sign off the phone, go to the break room, purchase a honey bun, sit in the break room, eat the honey bun, and then come back to my desk. And it took me five minutes. I took a five minute, uh, what is it called? um what is it called like unauthorized break or something like that <laughs> i was just like are you kidding me my actual response to the write-up was i was trying to stop it when i failed miserably that was my response to the write-up like i'm trying to lose weight try to stop it i failed after that i ended up going vegan which is how i lost the weight but i was about 220 at that time my highest weight was 220 i was 220 when i first went vegan way back in the day when i was working for geico that's crazy i don't know what year it was 2009 2010 i don't know but i only lasted six months because i was like the politics in this place it's ridiculous if i can't go to the bathroom or go get a honey bun for five minutes you know this call center is too strict for me and i like to have my freedom so it's ridiculous but i got written up at the post office <laughs> I started working at the post office right after my dad passed. He passed at the end of November 2018, had his funeral December 4th, 2018, and I started at the post office January 2019. Well, it wasn't going well because I was in a very extended depression state because, you know, I'm either hypomanic or depressed. It's how my life works. Can't control my brain. But anyway... I wrote this song called Broken Brain months ago and I still haven't finished it. I need to finish it. But anyway, it's my broken brain. I can't control it. So I would cry all the time at my case. I was working like 60, 70 hours a week. I was so unhappy. I didn't have any work home life balance. I would come home and everyone would be drunk and full and I'm just now getting home and I already missed the party every single day because we had like nine people living in my town home at that time. Me, Crystal, my cousin, her three kids and then Crystal's niece and her two kids. So do the math. Anyway, nine, right? So, <laughs> so um, we, they were always like having a good time and stuff. And I would be one of the first ones to go to work in the morning and the last one to come home. And it was just really sad for me. So anyway, um, thinking about my dad at work, I would cry all the time, you guys. They would tell me, Portia, you need to hurry up so you can get back and do, do another route. And I'd be like, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I was so depressed, you guys. I was so depressed. My dad lost his life. What to us was suddenly he he died from AIDS. He refused to accept that he had HIV. He did not receive medical treatment. And so many people were like, oh, how's your mom? I'm like, y'all, my mom and dad divorced when I was like four years old, you know? So, you know, you can't live with AIDS that long without treatment. So he, he it's definitely something new that he contracted within the last decade or so. So anyway, I was very ashamed about it at that time. I told people that my dad died of, of stomach cancer because I was ashamed that he didn't get medicine and take care of himself. Like he really lost his life to that. Um, but you know, whatever. I love my dad. I miss my dad so much. And I know he wouldn't mind me sharing his story now because it, yeah, I get tested you guys. But anyway, um, because we can live with it. It's okay. You, you, it doesn't have to be over just because you contract HIV. You can live with it, you guys. And I feel like it's important for people to understand that. Some people are like, oh, I'm just going to remain abstinent for the rest of my life. Good luck with that. <laughs> because baby, 
<laughs> can't be me, but uh, good luck with that. But anyway, I mean, I wish you the best. I really do for the people who say that. But anyway, I was crying all the time at work. I was sad. I lost my dad. I didn't spend enough time with him. And the post office is a toxic environment anyway okay i had the cops called on me and walked out for showing up to work and people on tiktok yes i posted it on tiktok i guess you can call me a clout queen but i i do like attention i'm not gonna deny that but i like positive attention and i wanted people to have my back and i was like y'all i have bipolar depression and i fell into a depression episode actually my next door neighbor in this apartment complex like my boom boom wall neighbor he passed away they found him dead in his car and it sent me into a depression episode we weren't close we would see each other in the hallway see each other on the elevator when i'm taking harvey down he i don't know we the mo the longest conversation we ever had was probably like 10 minutes just standing in the hallway chatting but whenever his fiance told me he died it that's one of my triggers so I'm like oh my god we're all gonna die we're all gonna die I'm so sad and my brain does that to me for some odd reason I couldn't get out of the bed I didn't want to go to work I will always eat I was talking to my homeboy the other day and I was like when I'm in a depression state that's one thing I'm gonna do is eat so I ain't gonna tell you I don't want to eat no I'm gonna eat I may go cook some noodles I may go get a pack of crackers or whatever I can get to just take it with me and go back to the bed and not have to stand there and cook but I'm gonna shove something in my mouth when I'm going through a depression episode but anyway it lasted about two months and my supervisor kept messaging me like please come back we need you to carry your route please come back so I'm like let me get myself together but what does it matter because we're all gonna die you guys that's me it's not funny it's actually really sad I wish that I could clone myself and be my hypomanic me when my depression me kicks in because I need that support and I need a therapist you guys I've been trying to find a therapist that accepts blue cross blue shield but they're all like we're not currently accepting new patients i'm like okay anyway um tried medication it didn't work for me i was actually allergic and it terrified me so now i've got like paranoia with medication i started breaking out in the rash my skin was peeling the lamictal rash and i was like i'm just not gonna try medicine again because if it says it can cause death what if i am that one percent you know like i was with the rash so i'm like no i'm good so i've been doing it my whole life anyway i didn't even find out that i was diagnosed bipolar until 2017 even though my mom knew since I was a child um, I don't know what age I was diagnosed but she didn't want to burden me and I actually appreciate that um, because it just would have brought up so much confusion but at the same time it is nice to understand myself and why I go through what I go through anyway back to the post office so I transferred to another office because the office I was at was way too toxic for me and I just wanted peace and I felt like if I relocated maybe I would find that peace well I got the flu and my doctor diagnosed me with the flu without actually testing me they said they can diagnose you without giving you a test so I was like okay I got the flu you know so what am I gonna do take some medicine send me home they're like you know just be off work for a week whatever recover take this medicine you'll be able to go back so I called in and my new office flipped shit like what flu is it type a type b how long have you had it we have a pregnant girl in the office you need to give me answers i'm like girl i gave you my note like i don't know what else you want from me this is a hipaa violation isn't it so she like came for me bad so now i've got this office gunning for me all because i contracted the flu and they didn't believe me it's like damn so anyway i was telling the truth usually whenever i don't come to work i um i don't know what i say it's almost like I need a mental health day, but I didn't do that there. I was really happy there. I was really happy there. And honestly, I wasn't calling in like that back then. I didn't start calling in until I got FMLA and learned that it was safe for me to stay home when I'm having an episode. So I don't ever remember having to lie or make up an excuse for not wanting to come to work back then. I don't remember. Now I tell them the truth. I'm just like, hey, I'm having an episode. I don't know what else to tell you. But... I don't know. Like, that really stumped me. I was really happy there, you guys. I was really happy there. And 
that week I took off, it showed their true colors. And I was like, yeah, maybe this isn't a place I want to be either. So I started crying there, listening to music, crying in my car. I was delivering mail in this car. I took out the seats and I was delivering mail, the back seats and the passenger seat. I just had a driver's seat in my little, in my little car. So anyway, um, <laughs> delivering mail in my car, crying, standing out, looking at rainbows when it's raining, singing, crying, praying that God moves me to another location because I was so unhappy. And this woman, not the postmaster lady that, that went off on me about the flu, another lady, she went off on me because I was drinking coffee at 7.05 a.m. at my mail case. And I'm like, I drink coffee in the morning because I love caffeine and it gets me going. She's like, well, you need to put it down and get to delivering. And I feel like she sent me into a depression episode right then and there because so many people in that office used to talk mad trash about this lady. And I stood up for her. Even the postmaster used to trash her ass. And I'm like, girl, you over here taking this woman's side and she doesn't even like you. But I didn't say that because I didn't want to be the one to to place that that what is it uncertainty in her brain anyway she ended up getting removed from that position because the postmaster didn't like her but at that time she didn't even know she was like this woman's sidekick and didn't even know the woman didn't like her but anyway she like yells at me and chases me outside because I started crying of course it's like instant depression episode so I start crying with my coffee take my coffee outside <laughs> you know standing outside sipping my coffee and people are like just come back in and, and just do your work and put the coffee down and so many people try to have my back but what they didn't understand is that I am bipolar and by her being mean to me it really hurt my feelings you guys and I was like I need to collect myself before I go back to touching some paper that I don't even care Care about I don't care about that mail right now I care about my mental health and I'm gonna get myself together before I come back inside y'all she actually wrote me up and said at 7.05 a.m. I asked La Portia to put her coffee down and she continued to drink her coffee like what is up with these people like is it me I just be minding my own business with the honey bun and the coffee but people are just so I don't know I feel like their superiors come down on them so they come down on us and I wish there were a way for them to convert that energy and not pass it down like there are some supervisors that I know now who are very even tempered and I'm like where did you come from even if you talk about us behind our backs we would never know because you're not up in here yelling at us cussing at us being rude and hey hey i need you i need you to do this if you don't do this then i'm gonna do this it's like i hate that one lady actually told me she wasn't gonna pay me for the whole day if i didn't go back out there and pick up all the packages that my scanner didn't pick up and scan I'm like, are you kidding me? You're not going to pay me? Even though I delivered the packages, you're not going to pay me for the whole day because 27 packages didn't read? Just type them in and scan them delivered. I delivered it. You know, I ain't stealing nothing. I ain't trying to go to federal prison for stealing no $3,000 microphone, although I really want that microphone. I'm not going to prison, baby. No, hell no. So yes, I delivered the packages. Just let me type it in. They said, no, I needed to go back out there, pick up every package, scan it, and re-deliver it. I'm like, what if it's already inside? Y'all are crazy crazy anyway the post office is very toxic you guys and maybe it is me maybe I am the problem maybe I am too nice and my mom and crystal told me I need to start putting my foot down and cussing these people out but I'm like I don't know I just don't want to spread that kind of energy so I guess I do come off as a pushover but I don't want to be a pushover but whenever I stand up for myself people label me as a bitch or oh I don't like her look see see she's like this it's like I don't know. I want to just be myself and and still stand up for myself. I don't I'm not weak. Please get that out of here. <laughs> I do be crying though. I do be crying. <laughs> but yeah, as crazy as I look right now, I do uh, go through some some interesting things. My mom laughed so hard when I told her about the honey bun write up. She laughed when I told her about the coffee write up. Baby, whenever I told her my station manager called the cops on me and said I pushed somebody, he said I physically assaulted someone, baby, she was ready to fight. She was like, oh, no, let me come up there <laughs> because that's that's a whole different level. You calling the cops. I could have gone to jail for something I didn't do. And on TikTok, it's like it was 50-50. Some people had my back. Some people were like, stop lying. You're crazy. They should have taken you to jail. You were up in there punching people and hitting people. That is not in my character, you guys. I am nonviolent. 
violent. I am non-violent. I can get a bit mouthy for sure. I can get mouthy, but I try so hard and I fight so hard to maintain my peace. Whenever I slip up, it's like I'm allowing people to win by by me behaving that way. And I don't want to behave that way. So that's why I was like, oh, can you guys believe this? He's calling the cops on me. And people were like, uh, why are you talking like that, baby? So that I don't be like this motherfucker, you know, because <laughs> I can't talk like that. Everyone can. If you say you can't, you're a dang lie because everyone has the ability to go off. But I choose not to. I choose to have peace, not just because of how I'm portrayed, but because of how I feel on the inside, my brain, my heart. And I can look back and say, I did not overreact. And I'm so proud of myself. I don't rage, but I do want to go to like one of those junkyard things where you can go and smash stuff because. I think I would benefit from that but I don't like bust windows I don't punch people I don't push people I'm just not that kind of person I uh I try to convert all the negative energy I can into positive energy so if you shoot it my way beware because you're not gonna get it back I'm gonna convert it but yeah I don't know why I wanted to talk about that 15 minutes that's crazy that was like a long time <laughs> I probably lost a lot of people because that I went on. I didn't even feel like I've been sitting in the car for 15 minutes, but I guess I have. Okay. Well, time for me to go. Oh, oh no. <laughs> That's a bummer. Oh no. It's still good. Okay. Time for me to crank the car. Mm-mm-mm.